Welcome back to Russia with Jalal on the on the radio show Sangam ninety four point seven FM. We are live on the radio show Sangam ninety four point seven FM. The one you can listen in your car. Or now we are live on a Facebook as well. If you want to see it, then you can go on a Facebook. You have to go on my Facebook. Just search for me. So, so just 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 search for my name Jalal Larak. Then you will get my Facebook. Then you can watch live right now on my Facebook as well. So, my son, my guest, my partner, who is present. जो यहाँ पर वैन ही वो जो है लिटिल किट ही यूज़ टू कम हियर अगर इसको अभी भी याद हो आई एम शोर ही स्टिल रिमेम्बर्स जो वैन ही वो ओनली मे बी नाइन टेन ईयर्स जब मैंने अपना रेडियो पर शुरू किया था बैक इन द डेज पंद्रह साल पहले तो ये यहाँ पर आया करते थे ना ही इज़ बैक आफ्टर अपना फिफ्टीन ईयर्स फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम And his name is Reese Larak, my son. Hello, Reese. How are you? Good, good. How's everything? Good, good, good. To do you remember this place? I do actually. As soon as we walked in, it was like a whole a huge flashback in my mind. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, this is back in the days, eh? We had some good times here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because I know, जब भी मैंने शुरू किया था, you know, like I said, uh, my my जो है radio career. So yeah, he used to come with me. Him, of course, uh, like he was very little. Uh, now he is a um, uh, big man now. Uh, so, 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 like, you know, are you happy to be in Calgary? Yeah, no, it's good to be back after almost two years. Two I years? Two, it's, been, yeah, it's been two years. I know you told me the other day. Yeah, it's been two years. Almost two years. Yeah, the last time I came was, um, yeah, no, like twenty twenty two. Twenty twenty two. Yeah. And uh, so, like, is there any like like do you see any changes? Ah, uh, honestly, like I've been exploring the city a bit over the last. Couple of days, and so much has changed. Yeah. So many stores that I thought were there aren't there anymore. So many new stores whose names I don't even know how to pronounce are here, <laughs> and just like 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 it's a pretty different city. But the people are the same, which is what makes Calgary home. Yeah, so. that's right. That's right. Yeah. So, Riz, of course, uh, uh, like it's been a while, like you said, uh, like. Fifteen years ago, mm. and of course, then it's like what now? It's like because you were gone to uh, uh, the Miguel University, right? So you know, like your transition from the high school to the Miguel, like how was it? What happened? Right. No. So to be honest, like growing up, I was always very close with family. So first of all, just moving across the country was not easy at all. Mm -hmm. um, and and I think like after I got accepted to Miguel. I was really excited, but at the same time, I was filled with anxiety and really nervous too, because it's the first time just being away from home. Uh -huh. And so, when I got to McGill, it was very, very new. For example, in high school, I I was used to class sizes of maybe twenty, twenty-five kids. Uh -huh. But then, in my first ever class at McGill, the theater hall was full. We had seven hundred people, and there's just and there's just one professor. So the environment is really, really different. Um, and, and it took some. Getting used to as well, and also I had to learn quite a few things that I probably, honestly, wouldn't have learned otherwise if I stayed in Calgary. Mm -hmm. Just how to fend for myself and how to live on my own, like doing the small things like cooking, but also the big things on on just trying to establish a lifestyle in a city that primarily speaks French instead of English, mm -hmm. and in a place that I haven't ever been before. Funny story, I always thought that. Montreal was in Ontario, and then I learned that it's in <laughs> Quebec, and so uh, clearly I wasn't well prepared to transition into Quebec. But with the support of a lot of friends and family, especially um, in Calgary, mm -hmm. I was able to sort of settle down, and then I started making friends there too. Mm -hmm. And just being like an Ismaili Muslim over there, there's a very strong community, and 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 they're always ready to welcome newcomers. With yeah. open arms, I yeah. think that really, really helps. Yeah. So you know, like uh, you were in a small city. I don't want to say small, but it was like still Calgary. Right. Or per Montreal is a bigger city. A lot of people, a lot of youngsters, because right. you know there are so many universities as well. Right. Like you know, Wahang was a lifestyle is uh, different than Calgary. For sure. Right. Yeah. So when a new kid, you know, I'm sure is going to be new kid like the one who are in the high school right now. They'll be going to other city universities, Toronto, Montreal, BC, maybe. So, what did you see the difference from Calgary to Montreal, from high school to the university? Sure. So that's a good question. Honestly, there's a couple of big, pretty, uh, pretty big differences between Calgary and 
Montreal. Yeah. First and foremost, they speak French there primarily. Right. Thankfully, if you're close to McGill or Concordia, which are the which are two English speaking universities, mm -hmm. then um, there's quite a bit of English still going around in the vicinity. Mm -hmm. But besides that, I have to say I think and it's gonna sound a bit harsh towards Calgary, but out there in the east things are just much more exciting. The, like, the, like in what sense? The nightlife over there is insane. Like people there, like they're very ecstatic. They're very excited. They, 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 they know how to work hard and party hard. Whereas in Calgary, things are a bit more tame, a bit more subtle, a, a bit more quiet. I'd say like, and I tell this to a lot, quite a few people. I think when you're in your young twenties or in your teens, like old teens, and you're coming into university, I think out east is the perfect place to be. You'll gain so much experience and you'll learn so much. And you'll you and you'll live to put it very frank. You'll live like you'll probably experience things that you won't experience in Calgary. Whereas mm -hmm. when it's time to settle down and you want to probably build a family and and you're tr and you're and you're looking for something quieter, I think Calgary is probably the best place to be. Mm -hmm. um, and you know we're right by two very well known national parks, Jasper and Bear. And honestly, there isn't anything in this world, especially in Canada, that beats the view of the Rockies as you're driving on the highway west towards Banff or north towards Jasper. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we, of course, uh, like you said, party and like, uh, or like they work hard, they yeah. party hard. Yeah. Maybe in Calgary, you know, like, like you know, what I noticed, Calgarians, you know, they like to go to go to the coffee shop more than the bar. Right. Make sense? Yeah. Is yeah. there? I think also just the demographic in Calgary the way it's like the way it is people are generally a bit older mm -hmm. and like I said right like the environment is a bit more subtle it's, it's a bit more quieter so I think that's what it is but where it's out there in the east like lifestyle is very fast very hectic I think is a way to put it like things there they move very very fast there's a lot of people too also just with the different provincial regulations in Quebec and Ontario versus Alberta, I think the environment there is sort of nurtures for a more hectic and hard going lifestyle. Whereas here with the environment that we have, it's a bit more subtle, a bit more quiet. It's more suitable for people who are ready to like settle down mm -hmm. after a, a, a roaring 20s, we'll call right, it. Right, right. Hello, Natasha. She's watching from uh, New York. Thank you so very mm -hmm. much. Uh, then we have uh, so many other people, Zenobia Waldi, Shaquille Gather from Edmonton. Thank you so much. Uh, like I know there are more people are watching. If you can just comment something, then I can see your name. Otherwise, I won't be able to see your name. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for watching and listening. Russia with Jalal on Radio Source Sangam 94.7. And just to sponsor care, Country Hills Toyota, Country Hills Toyota. If you're looking for a car, his or her, this is the uh, this is the best place to go. Think Toyota, think the giant Country Hills Toyota. And the phone number is four zero three two nine zero. 1111 or visit chtoyota.com you know when you are there uh, I think you went there 2017 yeah and then 2019 the whole world was kind of closed shut down because of the COVID end of 2019 yeah end of 2019 and I think it was November December 2019 when everything uh, like started yeah and the March to the like mostly country of course especially in North America shut down in the March right. 2020 right. when that hit uh, like COVID hit the Montreal or Canada. Right. What were like what was going on in university? In, like you know, what were the talk between students? Sure. Ye kya ho gaya? Sure. Yeah, right? sure. 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 So I so I still remember towards the beginning of March, um, all the kids were preparing to go on breeding week, okay. and you know during breeding week, like university can be very tiring, very hectic. Mm -hmm. So people want to get out of the city for a week and just relax and have a vacation. Right. So people are traveling all over the world, including the States, Europe, China, out, out East, like all over Asia, etc. Mm -hmm. And so I remember, I, st I still remember during reading, reading week, a few, a few of us were talking and just, just based on the statistics at the time, mm -hmm. traveling uh, contributes to the spread of the virus. Right. So we thought, okay, like as soon as reading week is over, we can expect um, a surplus of cases in Canada because people from all over the world will be coming in from flights, That's trains, right. etc. Yeah. And so we were expect, like I said, we were expecting a surplus. Right. Despite that, or even like even though we were expecting it, I still remember that um, it was a Thursday. I was in a biology lab. 
Uh -huh. And then suddenly Facebook was going crazy because the NBA just canceled their season mm -hmm. and the NHL was talking about it as well. Yeah. The in International Olympic Committee, IOC, was also talking about postponing the games because right. they were supposed to be held in 2020. Right. So, so clearly things were getting serious. Yeah. And then that evening, maybe just three hours later, we get an email from a McGill communication saying that school is being canceled <laughs> indefinitely because of the spread of the because virus. School, yeah, yeah. And so, and things were hectic. Like right away after that, people were like, there are so many questions. Right. And at the time I was the, I, I was the co-president of the Smiley Students Asso Association from Montreal. So a lot of our mm, members at McGill also otherwise in Concordia and just in other schools in the city were wondering okay what do we do next because like this was a first case scenario for all of us and we all were and we were all just in uncertain waters we weren't exactly sure how to go about this so like we want and so like the only thing we could think of is to rely on others for support and just be there for each, each other emotionally but also mm, mentally as well because it's a stressful time filled with uncertainty people are scared because the like, COVID 19 or SARS-CoV-2, it, it was a whole new virus. And the last time that we had a pan, um, the, the last time the world uh, declared a pandemic was in 1918 when influenza came out right, yeah. and that caused an insane amount of tragedy all over the world. Right, right, yeah. So we have Hussein Lad watching from Toronto as well. And then, you know, there are so many others. If you can write any comment, so I'll see your name and I, you know, love to mention your name as well. You're watching too. And listening to Russia with Jalal on Radio Station from 94.7 FM. Yes, my guest name. He's Ladakh. He's my son. Uh, he, he's, he's in town for a few days. I mean, you know, why don't uh, just get him on the show? And I think now he deserves to be on the show. Uh, he's been <laughs> like, you know, he came, you know. Before but I never invited him. But now this time I officially invited him. And uh, he's here as well. Zaheer Jalal Mawan is watching. You know, Zaheer Bhai, thank you so much for watching. Zahid Bhai ka show aara hai, Meghi 4 tarikh ko, agar aapne ticket nahi liye, to Zahid Bhai se contact kare ho, you can message me, I can get you in touch, jo hai apna, I can get you in touch as well to, for the Zahir uh, Jalal, and of course Leila Larak, his, his mom is watching as well, and thank you so much Leila. So you know, you just mentioned the Smiley, Smiley Student Association, mm -hmm. Misa, what is Misa? Right, so that's an excellent question. So Misa, it stands for the Montreal is Smiley Students Association, and it's essentially a student club that's based at a McGill for any Smiley student who's in a post-secondary institution okay. in Quebec. Or in Quebec. In Quebec. So okay. it, 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 it actually spans far beyond just the city of M Montreal. It, it includes Sherbrooke as well, and actually, excuse me, I also forgot it includes the eastern provinces in, as well, including the Maritimes. So, okay. Hal so Hal Halifax is also part of the Smiley Students Association. And so, the, so, so each different region has their own, ISA Calgary has their own, Toronto has their own, Edmonton has their own, Vancouver has their own. And so at every single institution, or at, it, at least in every single region, um, the Smiley Students Association is, it's essentially a home away from home. Okay. Because over there you'll meet your fellow, um, um, you'll meet your fellow Smiley brothers and sisters mm -hmm. who are also in post-secondary um, schools. Yeah. And, 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 um, and essentially the ISA they'll host different events throughout the year that, that are aimed to um, uh, to build rapport and a sense of community and brotherhood amongst the students. Okay. And I think that's really, really important, especially when you're transitioning to university. Because again, like it's a scary time. At one point, sometimes you feel like you're just one person in a room of 700. And so like it's wow. scary you feel all alone and it's a very new sort of lifestyle and i think we can all agree unambiguously that university is hard like it's difficult Different. and so just having that sense of community having a sense uh, just knowing that after an intensity of classes you can go and see your uh, you can uh, go and see uh, um people that are part of this community and you can rely on them for support either technical or emotional or mental or just academic support it's nice it like you can um they um 
They try their hardest to specialize a stress, uh, to nurture a stress-free environment so then you can take time away from school, you can take time to recharge and just relax and, and uh, just to help counter the stressful life stuff. Style yeah. that university causes. Okay, so like, do they have any events? Like, uh, do they do any events just to kind of you know make everyone kind of bring it together? For sure, all the students for sure, for sure. Do at they have activities? For sure. At the start of the at the start of the year, there's always an intro in, intro introductory barbecue where everyone can gather and they can meet each other for the first time just to build that rapport. Uh -huh. And then at the start of the winter semester, when everyone comes back from um, winter break and when we also get some newcomers coming in if they're on exchange or whatever yeah. we have an annual ski an, an annual ski trip which is probably um, my favorite part of the event uh -huh. even though I don't ski um, but it's always a fun time because you're essentially stuck with each other for 48 to 70 72 hours you have no choice but to get to know each other a lot better and, better. To, and to build rapport. Yeah. And then finally, uh, in the, uh, actually on uh, May 4th and 5th, we're hosting the, uh, the post-secondary games in Montreal, which oh, is a Canada-wide yeah. event where every single smiley post-secondary student is invited to partake in a healthy competition of sports, arts, and dance. Wow, and okay. so it's the first time that we're hosting it in Montreal. And I know that the PSG team over there right now, they're working really hard on ho on hosting an incredible weekend for all these smiley stu students who are planning to travel down to Quebec. And I know they're looking really, really forward to having everyone there mm. the next weekend. So you, so you right now, just uh, just you know, reading your intro, uh, so you moved from here, you did the high school here, you did the double IB here. So when you got in uh, McGill, mm. what was your first year or like the first degree? What was that? What were you doing and, and what you're doing right now? Sure. So I, um, I remember when I was applying to universities, I was trying to figure out what I want to do. Right. Because I, I, I always had a fascination towards STEM, like science, technology, and engineering, and maths. So I knew I wanted to do something science related. And then when I was applying to Amigo, uh, just on a whim, I applied to a certain program. And then three years later, that program probably became the most important and searched program because of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And that program was microbiology and immunology mm -hmm. and I have to say like um, my first two years of university when I was studying in this program I enjoyed it but it was hard to truly appreciate it just because everything happens on such a small scale you don't really see things happening um, with your eyes for example like what we typically study is how viruses infect cells, how the immune system attacks viruses, how bacteria infects viruses or, or uh, infects cells, or how viruses infect bacteria, yeah. and so on. So everything happens on a very, very small scale, because you can't see viruses with your naked eye. You can't yeah. see bacteria. Your I immune system, everything that's happening is so complicated, it's so intertwined, and it's all happening mm -hmm. in your body. So it's hard to truly appreciate what's going on. But then COVID-19 happened, mm -hmm. and suddenly, um, it just became the most important field for the next two years yeah. because um, without without understanding how these viruses work or how the immune system works, we would um, a Moderna and Pfizer they wouldn't have been able to uh, develop their mRNA vaccines in such a rapid amount of time. Yeah, yeah. Essentially, by understanding how the immune system interacts with viruses or what parts of the virus are important for the immune system to recognize, we were able to exploit that. And, and Pfizer and Moderna were able to build their vaccines in record time. Yeah, yeah. So now, of course, you know, let's say when it, when, 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 when COVID-19 started, when like COVID was here, right. what were you doing in the lab or for your, for, or like for your lab work? What were you doing? So actually, um, at the time, um, I was an undergrad. And so with the McGill restrictions, I wasn't actually able to enter a lab at all. But that didn't stop me from still trying to contribute and what I mean by that is because I was studying in the microbiology and immunology field, and a lot of people knew that, a, lo a lot of my colleagues and friends and I, like, we would always get a lot of questions. And, and so, you know, we, we would try to explain how this whole process works, like, and um, why COVID-19 the is actually so, in, like, from a purely scientific standpoint, is actually so spectacular. Because if you think about it, it's evolution happening in real time. 
because evolution typically happens over we're talking centuries you don't you typically don't see it happen right away but with viruses they're actually very special um very special beings and we saw in real time how how COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 was evolving mm -hmm. because we saw so many different variants and so many strains coming out rapidly one, one after one, 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 after one yeah. so that caused questions you know like why are these strains so significant why are some strains being um, um, uh, alerted by the WHO and others are not how are these strains coming to be what is causing them um, like um, like what is causing specific strains over other strains and what makes some of them more dangerous than others a whole bunch of questions and so at the time because I because uh, I, I was currently um, like in my courses we were studying how viruses evolve how they infect how the immune system uh, targets them and so this was right in my wheelhouse so a couple of my so a couple of my colleagues and I we decided instead of answering questions one by one we mm -hmm. thought we could be a bit more efficient and productive and we actually published a review paper in uh, in frontiers and in, in immunology which is like a world-renowned journal mm -hmm. and this review paper specifically talked about um, how the immune system interacts with viruses and how viruses function yeah. and so that was what I like to say my contribution to um, 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 to humanity because at the time I really wanted to work in a lab and like I've always been really interested in viruses and vaccines, but unfortunately, because of restrictions, it ju we just weren't able to. And honestly, for a good reason too, COVID nineteen was an entirely new virus, and with the new strains as as well, um, the the world was facing an entirely new problem. Right. I'll give you an example. When the Zika virus first came out, and we're talking long, long, long time ago, yeah. the Zika virus is a whole other virus. Mm -hmm. with that actually emerged in Africa. And when it, and then when it emerged in Africa, eventually there were new strains coming out. And these new strains, some of them emerged in Pakistan, some of them in Europe. One of them actually came into Brazil. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason for these different strains coming out is, uh, and this is what scientists are speculating, is actually because of geography. Ob ob obviously, the climate in Africa is very different than that in Pakistan, right. which is also again very different in Brazil. Right. So just because of the climate changes, these viruses, they're very good at adapting to a new environment, which is how they evolve. Mm -hmm. so, when the, so, then when, so then when a new strain emerged in Brazil, this, uh, this specific strain only in Brazil actually started causing severe defects in the brain. So, so children were dying rapidly. Like they weren't even, like, uh, unfortunately, they, um, yeah, they passed away almost immediately after infection. And so that wasn't observed with any other strain of Zika around the world. So then when, it was, so then when these new strains were coming out um, for COVID, um, like the world, like they were justified in imposing further restrictions just in case one of these strains turned out to be a lot more dangerous right. than one of the parent, than one of the parental ones. Right, right, right. Hello Nash, thank you so much for joining. Karim Koja, Yari Mada, Sonia, hello Sonia. Julie Sonanji, hello, hi, hello to you as well. Thank you so much everyone for watching. You are listening to Russia with Jalal on the radio station 94.7 FM. My guest name is Riz Varak, my son. Uh, of course, he's been in uh, Megal for the last uh, seven years, uh, doing his, uh, like his PhD now. Uh, and his key, in key jo special uh, na, jo hai subject, it's on uh, jo hai cancer research. And of course, jo hai we'll be talking about the cancer research as well. So, you know, uh, this COVID-19 hmm. virus, did you see it with your own eyes through microscope or whatever? Right. So um, yeah. eventually, when I, yeah. when, I, when, I started, when I started my master's in yeah. uh, July 2021, after graduating from my undergrad, yeah. I actually got into a lab at McGill at the cancer center there uh -huh. and the project we're working on is actually COVID related so eventually I did end up seeing COVID uh, the like the virus responsible for COVID and not only that mm -hmm. after working with it for over a year I end up generating an entirely new virus that is part COVID what do you mean so basically I took the COVID-19 virus right. and then I combined it with the second virus which and was uh, it's called VSV, VSV. and I, and I'll I'll explain why it's actually related to the cancer research topic. Okay. I'll explain why after, but like I combined it with VSV, and and after over a year of optimizing and troubleshooting, we were finally able to generate 
this virus, which is a combination of COVID and VSV. And then VSV. So where did you get the virus from? The virus, I mean, uh, so after... For the lab only, I guess? Yeah, you yeah, know, so like, um, so like after, um, so it, it, it essentially gets extracted and purified from patient samples yeah. by a certain organization and then you purchase it from them. Obviously, you need the proper credentials because you just, you can't, the, you they can't just, buy they just won't sell it to anybody. <laughs> um, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you are listening to Russia with Jala, just go to the sponsor. Kya hai? Country Hill Store, uh, if you're buying us, uh, if you're buying any car for his or her, go to Country Hill Store and the phone number 4032901111 or visit their website chtoyota.com. So, we'll take a short break, and of course, uh, then after break, we'll be right back, and of course, we'll talk about the cancer research that's his specialty. Plus, there are so many other things. What is he doing currently? Now, he's doing a PhD, but there he is. But he like involved with so many other activities, other uh, the organizations as well, uh, and, and he does lots of uh, the volunteer work as well. So all those details we will talk about after this commercial break. Uh, let me just play this super duper commercial, then we'll be right back. Thank you so much for listening. Rush Hour with Jalal. We are back at the Giant Country Hills Toyota. Your Toyota Giant is rolling out the red carpet with the best rates, the best pricing, period. Take advantage of red hot cash rebates up to $5,000. Finance as low as 0% or no payments until October 2024 OMC. Plus, ask about the Giant's lifetime or limit on their offer. Three years free full maintenance and free winter tires and storage. Red tag days with over 200 Toyotas in stock on now at the Giant Country Hills Toyota. Thank you so much everyone for watching, yes, uh, don't go anywhere, uh, I think I'll be, the, I'll be the happy show, but there are so many things to talk about. Uh, Reese, are you enjoying Reese? Yeah, yeah, it's been a fun time, I've always dreamed of being on this chair, finally, 15 years later, right here. <laughs> then of course, uh, it's going to be safe on Facebook, uh, you can share with your friends and family, and hopefully you can share with your friends as well, family is watching already, and we'll be sharing with other, like, others as well, so I think this is very nice. And uh, no, I think this so far so good. So you have you so you've been answering all the questions so far. Yeah. Hello Zina, Jali Mother, Raheem, Yal Mother, thank you so much for joining us. We're just on a commercial break right now and we'll be back in a minute and a half. So just stay here. Yes, 
वेलकम बैक टू रशिया जलाल ऑन रेडियो शो संगम 94.7 एफएम आज मेरे गेस्ट हैं अभी स्वागत जो कि अभी मॉन्ट्रियल से आए हैं और उनसे उनसे बात करें कि जब भी व्हेन यू मूव टू मॉन्ट्रियल 7 इयर्स अगो तो एज अ स्टूडेंट एज अ यूथ क्या सिचुएशन थी लाइक स्पेशली ड्यूरिंग कोविड एंड नाउ इट्स आफ्टर कोविड वी सी नो लाइक ड्यूरिंग कोविड विद कनाडा दे अनाउंस दे विल बी योर पार्टनरशिप विद द विद द मडोना Uh, for the next few years to uh, to produce covid vaccine about 25 million a year mm. and they want you to have jo hai apna one of the you can say the lab in lab in montreal right. where they will produce the, the 25 million right. so uh, there so i think at that time when he made the announcement he was at the mcgill university right. then he visited i think one or two lab right. and you and the, you happened to be there in that lab yeah What happened? Right. So basically, yeah. So so Prime Minister Trudeau and the CEO 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 of Moderna and the Healthcare Minister, um, they all came to McGill. Uh, I think it was April twenty ninth, twenty twenty two, to announce that um, they, that uh, Moderna is partnering with McGill to open up an mRNA vaccine facility uh-huh. uh, based in Laval, which is very close to Montreal. And so basically uh the so the reason that she came to our lab is because the mRNA vaccine that Moderna uses was produced in our lab in your lab in our lab oh, in 2017 okay. uh like the technology was um published into a journal and it was, and so there was a there was a research associate in our lab who was working with a Moderna executives on the technology uh-huh. and then um a Moderna took it and that's how Moderna was actually to actually able to build the mRNA vaccine against covid so fast because yeah. like one year's record timing for it to go through clinical trials and FDA approval etc etc yeah. it's not easy it, yeah. it, it it is a world record yeah yeah and so because we have a special relationship with Moderna prime minister should have wanted to come by the lab and personally thank some of the uh people who are part of the lab yeah. and so I was actually fortunate enough to be there that day and we actually talked for a few minutes and he told me that the new mRNA facility in uh the new mRNA vaccine facility in Quebec it's going to be it's going to start off with um generating a more vaccines towards viruses but eventually they're going to be moving towards cancer because one of because like an up and coming field of research right now in cancer are you is using M- mRNA vaccines to target them yeah oh, okay yeah. okay yeah. so you know of course like in like fast forward uh your specialty it's a uh, cancer research right why and, that's a good question and when did you get in like sure. you were there like you were in it sure so i think i've actually been interested in so I, I, actually i'll start a bit further back i think um growing up i was just like i've always been surrounded by really amazing people um and i think i was just inspired by all of them to want to do something head turning sometime in the world Yeah. And so I just want like like I I I try to go by a philosophy that I don't just want to l- 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 live in the world I want to change it I want to better it I want to improve it. And so in high school when I was learning about about a biology and cancer I learned exactly how bad cancer is. is yeah. Like it, like in a cli- in a clinical setting when you're sitting across from an oncologist and you hear the words I'm sorry you have cancer yeah. that's heartbreaking for so many, so many people. Yeah. Because even though there's so much research in cancer right now, the rates are still very high. Very high. Like Cancer Canada is pre- is estimating a 50% incidence rate, um, and a 25% mortality rate, meaning that one in every two people is, is expected to d- develop cancer. So wow. either you or me, yeah. and then one in four are expected to die from it. Wow. So cancer isn't going in, in anywhere anytime soon. And so I thought, you know, I want I want to be part of that. Like I want to I I want to try tackling that problem. I want I want to be part of that solution. 
because uh, I feel like it, like what better way is there to change the world than by giving patients a sense of hope you know like yeah. it's not over there's a lot of research like there's a lot of new technology out there a lot of new therapies out there and so I, I, so I, I wanted to be part of that and so fast forward, I joined um, a, a McGill for my undergrad, and I was already interested in cancer, and then I fell in love with viruses wow. and, and immunology. And so I thought, you know, like, there has to be a way to combine my two passions, cancer and viruses, into one. And so there's actually a type of treatment called oncolytic viral therapy, which is the use of viruses to kill cancer. It essentially, you have a patient, you'll inject a high high dose of virus into the body, and this virus has been altered, it's been changed in a certain way, so then it targets and kills cancer cells. That's where my project comes into play now. Mm -hmm. uh, earlier I told you that like I not only looked at COVID, but I've, I've also used it to build a whole new virus. Mm -hmm. I, I, I won't say much right now because it's an ongoing project. Research, but, yeah. but yeah, but essentially, where um, we've combined uh, the COVID virus with another virus, BSB, um, to to generate a whole new virus, and there's reason to believe that this virus can be used to um, um, can be used as a new uh, cancer killing virus treatment. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the main focuses of my PhD right now, and like the hope is that um, one day. This can be used um, further on, perhaps in um, in a clinical setting. Yeah, clinical setting as well. Yeah. So you know, same thing. You know, the way we had the COVID nineteen. So when they inject that uh, that that vaccine, they right. go and fight with the COVID virus. Right. Same as uh, this kind of virus will be. So you will inject in the body, mm -hmm. which will go and fight, or you can say protect the body from the cell. Sure. From. So it's similar in a sense, but also a bit different because the way the vaccine works is uh, it doesn't. It, um, the vaccines they don't target the virus itself what they do is they actually train your immune system so it's basically practice for your immune system to learn how to kill the actual virus if it if it ever enters your body yeah. so what happens is you inject the vaccine the immune system it'll recognize it it'll learn how to kill it in the best way possible or it'll, like it'll like it will get trained on how to kill it um, the um, um, rapidly so then w if you ever get the real deal the real pathogenic virus then the immune system has are already trained itself it has the memory and it'll be able to execute the killing very fast so you think so then we'll have kind of the cure for the cancer so the thing in is, the future some kind that's a good question now the thing is uh, so cancer isn't just like cancer is an umbrella term you see right. cancer isn't just one condition it's a plethora of conditions it's a wide array it's like it's like it's an umbrella term under cancer you have so many different types of conditions and the thing is a lot of them are patient specific too right. like cancer is like it doesn't present itself the same way in every single body it changes from person to person to person which is why um i'm not like it's hard to say at this point if we'll ever have quote quote unquote a cure to cancer but we'll definitely make progress at, at how to better handle it how to detect it detect and it. how to prevent it from going out of control right. and a really good starting point are mRNA vaccines because one of the one of the best things about these types of vaccines is that they can be changed very easily so then they're so then they so then they're tailored towards that specific patient okay got it, got it. You are listening and watching to Russia with Jalal on uh, on uh, Radio Sosangam 94.7 FM. Uh, yes, the mere saath mere guest hai Riz Larat. Uh, Sama Kasam, thank you so much for watching. And if you are watching, so please, uh, you know, that's uh, the people are watching. Please write any comments so I can see your name. Otherwise, I won't be able to see your name. So I'd love to uh, to announce your name if you are watching and or or if you are listening, you can text me at five eight seven eight nine nine four seven eight six. So in your intro, you said you are part of a lot of, uh, like, there are a bunch of organizations. Right. For example. For example, Eureka Canada. Eureka Canada. What is that? So Eureka Canada is a Canada-wide program that's actually run by students um, spread across Canada. Now, what it exactly is, is that it's a 10-week research program um, specifically designed for high school students. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is that in this research program that's 10 weeks, um, these students will, will will be exposed to what we call the scientific process. Okay. Um, so they'll learn exactly what research is about. They'll learn what's uh, how to generate a research question. They'll learn how to find 
evidence or data that answers that research question they'll and they'll learn how to analyze whatever evidence or data they're seeing in journals or online yeah. and then finally at a at a year-end symposium where professors and experts in the field are invited they they get to learn how to present their findings and their knowledge to a general audience including parents okay. students teachers and again professors who are and experts in the field too. Mm -hmm. So is it only for science students or for? No, no, no. It's so the so the beauty about Eureka is that it's a design for anyone who is in science, but also who isn't in science. If you have a remote interest in research and you, and you want to get a taste of it, see if it's something that you'd be interested in doing as a career, then it's a perfect it's a perfect program to pursue. And then we have programs all over Canada at this point. Mm -hmm. They we actually started off in Calgary way back in 2017 was a pilot program. Yeah. And right now, as of this moment, we have we have programs in Edmonton, Toronto, Windsor, Vancouver, oh. Kingston, and Montreal. And we're hoping to open up open up two different chapters in Guelph, Ontario, as well as Ottawa. And hopefully in a couple of years we'll also go beyond the borders and go into the states. We already have con um, interested parties in actually um, in Boston mm -hmm. and in California and in Oxford, United Kingdom as well. Oh wow! wow. Yeah. And and you and your role with it? So I so I've actually been for Eureka for like, actually quite some time now. Yeah. Um. So I started the Montreal chapter in two thousand and twenty, right around the time COVID was at its peak. Mm -hmm. And actually that year the the research theme was COVID nineteen. So all these high school students who had so many pressing questions about how do viruses work, what's COVID-19 like, right. how's it affecting this, that, whatever, yeah, yeah. all they were able to research that in, in Eureka and then present those findings at the very end. Yeah. So I started the Montreal chapter in 2020, and then after that I joined the national team as your senior vice president of the regional operations. So basically, basically my job was to oversee all the different regions and just make sure that they uh, uh, and just provide as much support as I can to help them host a quality, like a high quality and high caliber uh, research program okay. in their respective regions. At the same time, we also I also help facilitate the launch of the Vancouver region, which is our newest region yet. And currently, I'm actually um, uh, the senior vice president of the national team. So basically, just running in the background, um, helping design the curriculum, helping design the application process, helping design. Um, the national symposium yeah. that we're having at uh, that we're gonna happen uh, that we're gonna host at, in the be beginning of June. So at the moment, just running sort of a, a behind the scenes, just making sure everything is the good to go at, in the front of the house. Okay, so it's for the high school students. Once they <laughs> go to university, they are done with the Eureka. No, they're not. So actually, the way because like we are cognizant and we recognize that high high school students they they may not be familiar at all with how research works and they'll need some guidance right. so basically the way the program is structured is that for every three to three to four students we have we get one we, we hire an undergraduate student to, to sort of serve as their mentor and supervisor if you will okay. so basically what happens is during the program these uh, the kids will con congregate in groups of three to four they'll each have each group will have their undergrad undergraduate student mentor or supervisor and then together, these guys will be working on their own research project, and um, and so this undergraduate student they'll essentially show these high, high school students the ropes, mm -hmm. and then the hope is because we because we take a um, like a bottom to top approach, the hope is that these high school students after they're done high school they'll come back to Eureka and they'll be willing to volunteer their time as an undergraduate student or even as an executive member on one of the regional teams or mm -hmm. national teams. National team, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. And their website is Eureka? Canada.org. It's a Y-O-U-R-E-K-A. -E -E Canada. Canada.org. Canada. And we're currently, uh, we're currently recruiting regional ex executives for all, all of the different regions, as well as on the national team. So if anyone's interested in applying, they should for sure check out the website and they'll find the application there. Yeah. Anishita, thank you so much for joining us, Anishita. Temur, Temur Gilani, Temur from Tampa. Yes, sir, bhaiya, thank you so much for joining in the comment. Uh, Reese, proud of you, buddy. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Temur. Uh, Yasmin Alarika just joined us. Well. Thank you so much, Yasmin, for joining us. So, moving on, like, uh, what's the future now for Reese? What is he thinking now? I think you're like now you're doing a PhD, right? And uh, you know, it depends on your bread and butter, where the bread and butter takes you. But what's next? 
That's an excellent question. Honestly, I and like I've gone through this a couple of times now. I have to say, like at the moment, I'm I'm just enjoying the research. Like I'm just enjoying the PhD. Sure, it comes with some uh, frustrating times because a lot of it is troubleshooting and just trying to figure out what went wrong in the experiment. Right. But at the same time. I have to say, I don't think there's any other career l l l like it. Because can you imagine? Because like the part of like the fundamental part of research is to uncover the unknown, right? right? So can you imagine? You're one of the only people in the entire world who knows something. Who knows something? Yeah. Like it's a privilege. Yes. And like I think. Very good point. Yes. And I think just going forward, I don't think I want to leave research anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Again, it is frustrating, but at the same time, I am enjoying it. And so I think I want to finish this PhD, um, and and I and I want to do the best I can in whatever time I have remaining in the program, and then after that we'll see where life takes me. And I think that that brings me to a point because I think over the last so many years, it's always like um, ever since I was finishing up undergrad, there's always been so many options and so many choices, but also so much uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And it can get stressful. It can get overwhelming. It's like, what do you do next? Like you can try planning out your future. But I think one of the major things COVID-19 talk, taught me, and I'm sure right. other people, is that the future is so uncertain. Right. Like, you never know what's coming next. What's coming and next? so I think for me, like, I, I go by this personal philosophy uh, about like, whatever happens is for the best. Yeah. So I think, and you taught me this actually just watching you all these years, is that just work hard and with integrity and a doors will open. And, and they'll open by themselves. Like, yeah. you have to put in some work, but without even trying sometimes, some door's gonna open and you'll just know that it that then it that at that time it's like that that's the door you're supposed to take. Yeah, yeah. So to put it short, right now I haven't really planned what's ha happening after the PhD, but yeah, but I'm sure that you know it will get sorted out. It'll, it, it'll get figured out. It will figure it out. Yeah. So of course you know you are busy with so many things and you are part of the Smiley the Smiley Volunteer Corp as well uh, in like in the mosque or, or like in the Jamaat Khan. Uh, you are busy there as well. You so you're so you're part of it. You are part of Misa. So what do you do like when you have free time? Well, like if you have any free time. What free time? Exactly. Yeah, no, yeah. Joking, joking. No, like I think you know, like what's important is just to have a work-life balance. Yeah. And I think like over university, one thing I learned because I'm sure you remember, I was very quiet as a kid and very shy. Yeah. Now it's hard for me to get to stop talking. <laughs> so I think you know, like yes, I can see that in last 15 minutes. Yes. <laughs> so like, <laughs> And so I think you know, like um, I think one thing I really, I like, I think I've I think I've learned over university that I'm actually a very social person, mm -hmm. and I think I um, in my free time I like spending it with others, with like I, like I just like yeah I, I I just like talking and having a good time with friends, and just you know just like just chilling with each other, like uh, just like trying to forget about a stressful day or or like a failed experiment or upcoming deadlines for a bit, and just giving time for the brain to relax, recharge, reset. And then yeah, and the whatever that, that activity is is sometimes it's in a coffee shop, sometimes it's going for a drive, sometimes it's going to see a viewpoint. A lot of people in Montreal at this point know that I love sunsets, and like uh, you'll often find me in in the evenings towards seven or eight p.m. chasing a sunset somewhere. Oh, okay, good to know. Yeah. Good to know. Good to know. No, you are watching to Russia with Jalal on Radio Sushma ninety four point seven FM. This is sponsored by. Control Stoyeda, chstoyeda.com is website that you can visit anytime. If you're looking for any car or your SUV, oh, by all means, they can help you out with all your car needs and all your maintenance services as well. You know, their phone number is 403-290-1111. So, you know, Riz, uh, of course, uh, when you are uh, growing up, uh, when you were in Calvin in high school, uh, then, of course, then, the, like, then you went to Montreal, you were you were alone in Montreal. You were just there for a couple of days until you like you know until you find your residence and everything. I'm sure there are people help you where you are, except your parents. Okay, well, I know parents is an you know easy answer, but who, like what are like you, if you want to mention their name, if you want to thank them, this is your chance to do it. For sure. No, honestly, I have to say like it takes a village. Like village to raise like, a child. It's a bit of a cliche, but honestly, I really do believe it does. It does take a village, and yeah. I think like that brings me to a one point before I start thanking people because yeah. I have a list. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> be before I start thanking you, I have to say like I think like in such a competitive world now because yeah. it's only getting more and more competitive. Like competition yeah. is it's high. Getting easy. 
it like the job market is saturated in almost every single field and the way the con current conditions are in the world it's not stopping anytime soon right. so i think it's not only about what you know but, but also about who you know as well right. and so i think that's what i mean by it takes a village because often to get even the simplest of jobs you, you do need to have a connection and i think for me because like honestly like um i think i've learned a lot by coming to mcgill but it wouldn't have happened but um firstly it, it wouldn't have happened by um, um without all of the support I got in Calgary, but then also I don't think I would have been able to establish myself the way I did in Montreal without the support I received from there um, and in Calgary as well. Right. Um, so I think yeah no like I think like it does take a v village and and again it's not a, it's not about just what you know but who you know as well. And with that I I, I guess I can get started on this list of people. I think first and foremost is Amir Keshavji. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think he's watching right now because he's traveling back to Calgary very soon. But he's a but he's a university specialist who, without whom I probably wouldn't be at McGill right now and wouldn't have learned as much as I have. And so mm -hmm. I'm forever g grateful for him. And and I always look very forward to all the coffee chats that we have whenever I'm back in one whenever I'm back in Calgary. Right. And I know that he owes me one soon, so I look forward to it. <laughs> Um, after that, probably Zaire Shivji. Zaire Uncle has been ha, has been my day one. Without him, probably wouldn't have finished IB. Without him, probably wouldn't have had my first research opportunity with um, uh, um, at the Foothills ho Hospital in Calgary. And without him, probably wouldn't be at, at McGill either. He like he's always been there since day one. Always ready to support. I still remember I once called him in the middle of the night to help me with a with with a, a f f physics assignment, and we spent hours on it. And he co he didn't complain once. Wow. And so like always, always, always so grateful for him. There's also Dr. Jadaji, yes. um, at uh, who's a kids uh, physician at uh, the Alberta Children's Hospital. Um, uh, honestly very very grateful for all of his support and and everyone he's introduced me to including Amir Keshavji and so without him probably wouldn't be where I am today so you know Dr. Taj Adavi is like the Salman's husband uh, right yeah yeah which which also brings me to Salman yes. who, uh, I, I really miss her today I wish she was here I wish she, but I she, she, gave, was here. she did give her regards so like yeah. you know we're, we're for sure thinking of her right now um, and I think, uh, you know, like there are so many people in Calgary. If I continue, we probably won't finish by six. So I'm going to quickly jump to Montreal. Yes. There's also um, Hussein Damji and his family. They, they welcomed me with open arms um, um, a bit after I got to Montreal. And he's always there for all of the students. So if there's yeah. anyone traveling to Montreal to, to get started in, in post-secondary, he's the person he's that the will person. probably reach yes. out to you. And he's very welcoming, very nurturing, and yes. very supportive to all of the different students. He's always there for you. I remember when I had my accident last year and I dislocated my knee and fractured my femur, he called right the next day and he told me if I need anything, just uh, don't hesitate to give him a call. So it's just, you know, it's just people like that who are just like, you know, like you just feel a sense of comfort just knowing that you have such kind and and, and welcoming people in your corner yeah. and who want the best for you. Yeah, and and so there know, was one more person, Yasmin, aren't you something? I was, I was about to, um, yeah, yeah, so Yasmin Nato, who's part of council, uh, she's she's been, she's probably been Misa's hugest support system for years on end. I won't go into I won't go into detail, but she knows what I'm talking about. And for and again personally and and as a collective whole, very very grateful for everything she's done. Yeah, and I remember you know one of the time you were sick uh, in Montreal, like in the first couple of years. Yeah, and uh, it was tough to get you in, like like talk to like to talk to you. Now, of course, we are here in Calgary. We don't know what to do. So I call Arman Kurji. Right. One of my from the friend from the Jubilee Games, I told him, I said, can you just go to his room and just check him out? How's he doing? Just give me support and he yeah. did go. So thanks to Arman whenever he watched the show. Uh, but no, I think this is wonderful to hear. I think uh, you don't like you don't forget the people who help you when you were growing. It's very, very important. It uh, doesn't matter wherever you are in your life. This is very important. And now when now people knows you, a big thanks or big credit goes to those people. For sure, very for sure. And actually there's just one last group to thank and that's why the Smiley Students Association. Yes. Without them I probably you know like 
they were there for me every single day in undergrad, which was a stressful time from when I ended up in the hospital uh, in the middle of the night to um, and um, to just helping me with academic stress as well. So a huge shout out to to Misa. Yeah, thank you so much, Rich. It was wonderful to talk to you. Now everyone knows. I think it was. Uh, I think uh, you deserve to be here. And congratulations again for what you have achieved. Uh, and uh, Naran Jamal is watching from Toronto as well. Naran, thank you so much for watching. So inshallah, we'll talk to you next time. And all the best to you for all your future endeavors, all the future work. Inshallah, we'll see you soon somewhere. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching and listening. Russia with Jalal on the Radio Show Sagam, 94.7 FM. Thanks so much. I'm gonna turn off the Facebook line. <laughs> <laughs>